This is Joey. Joey, and we are at <laughs> we are at Super Training. I um, this is my first time here. I just got done with deadlifts, and now we are about to start my favorite part of the workout as of right now. Um, the the bro stuff. I'm um, a lot more hypertrophy stuff. I'll I'll be doing biceps. We'll okay. we'll both be doing biceps. Mm -hmm. Kind of take you through what a typical arm day looks like for me. So yeah. Okay, so um, I know one reason why I like powerlifting and I think why a lot of people like powerlifting is because you have something to progress at weekly. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you, you do squats, you're able to work on that specific skill and improve weekly. Um, and I think a lot of misconceptions that people have about a lot of hypertrophy work or bodybuilding bro workouts is they kind of just like aimlessly do, right. you know, whatever it is, like 10, 20, 30 reps, whatever they feel like in the gym. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I still implement a lot of hypertrophy training into my workouts, but the one thing that kind of helps me motivated to do these things at the end of a workout is to work on progressing weekly at it. So, and sometimes I can't progress weekly, but that's typically the goal. So. Um, yeah, we'll do some biceps. Uh, keep it simple. My, one of my favorite workouts to do is just curls. Um, I'll do supinated, I'll do hammer curls. Um, today we'll just do Curl. some, yeah, just curls. Okay. So I guess a warm, you, what, what do you usually? I just warm it with tens and I just progress. Cool, let's do it. Okay, yeah. you grab the tens, okay. I'll grab these guys. And then, um, yeah, what, what do you typically like your rep ranges to be around? Um, 10 on each arm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah very cool. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll do some biceps. I don't know if you know this, but if you squeeze your glutes, it becomes really easier. Really? Yeah, try Actually, it. I had no idea. Does it feel easy? Oh, dude, it does. Yeah? I wonder why that is. I think you're just kind of focusing more on it and just, I don't really know. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those guns. Is that too light for you? Do you want to go up or? Is that we can usually? go up. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna do actually BFR for you. Do you mind doing that? Yeah. Let's cool. do it. So um, one tool I like to use to implement into my training is blood flow restriction, um, occlusion training, whatever you want to call it. Basically, um, the ideal principle for that is, um, especially a lot of people who are injured, they they like to incorporate BFR training into their routine. Um, Restricting the blood flow from the muscle, um, the whenever you're doing the reps or doing you know whatever exercise you're doing, it stimulates the exact same stimulus under a heavy load. So say you know whenever you're squatting heavy or you know using a heavy weight, it activates your type two muscle fibers. And the mm -hmm. idea with BFR is to be able to do the exact same thing without the heavy load. So it decreases recovery time, especially if you're injured. You're able to do um, higher rep stuff, stuff that isn't going to impose as much stress as a heavy load would, um, but get the same benefits. So yeah, why not use it? Um, you know, they make tourniquets that kind of are meant for this, but I like to use my power wraps to, um, you know, wrap around. I'll do it, you know, around my arms, around my legs. Um, I've found that they are very steady and um, they, they get the job done. So you don't want to wrap, wrap it too tight. Is that, how's that feel? It feels good. Okay. Just, just enough um, to kind of, like I said, have a little bit of pressure. Um, can you, how does yep. that feel? Good? That's good, yeah. Mark, <laughs> Mark BFRs, doesn't he? No, you don't, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does that feel good? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you don't wanna totally cut off blood circula circulation like you're dying, you just kinda want to have a little bit of something there to um, stop the blood flow from coming out of the muscle, so. And these are terrible. So typically, um, the rep ranges I'll do is um, first set 30, and then two to three sets after that at 15. Mm -hmm. Do you do it both? I'll do both, yeah. And it's always funny to see how fives, like, the first set is, feels okay, and then after that you're, like, dying doing <laughs> five pounds. I feel like Mark. Just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it got to a point where I could, I would do them, and then like by the last set, I would like literally have to use like two and a half pound like plates just to finish my last set. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I'll do them after you, so. Well, okay. So I won't make you suffer <laughs> without me suffering. I know. I need to do this. Yeah. What else do you do for arms? I really just do curls because okay. I do a lot of push movement, so I don't do a lot of tricep okay. work. Gotcha. Does Mark or do one of these guys do your training? No, uh, Eric from TSA does my okay, training. Okay, very yeah. cool. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. So. TSA, yeah, they're, they're awesome. I love them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bryce, he's up in Colorado with me. So. Right, right. He was, I haven't been able to train with him too much. Um, actually, last weekend he came up, or oh, two really? weekends ago he came up to Fort Collins. But, um, oh, nice. Yeah, I've always been a very big fan of them. They're very Same. knowledgeable guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you, so you power lift? Yeah. Do you, have you um, done a meet before? Yeah, I did my first one in December. Cool. Um, I have one coming up in April. Okay. Just California State Championships. And, and then... uh, Laguna, right? Yes. Okay, yes. nice. Cool. That'll be a cool meet. Yeah. I know. I can't at, wait. at the Juggernaut? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then have raw nats after that. Very cool. How do you feel? It's humbling. It's there. Yeah, it's it humbling. It is very humbling. <laughs> the, first, the first set and you're using, you know, typically about 60 to 80% of what you're usually using. It seems like it'll be easy, but um, it's, it's, yeah, it's very, very humbling. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I remember doing these. Yeah. Yeah, they're just, especially for um, leg extensions and leg curls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They mm -hmm. hurt, man. They're, I remember the first time I did them, I like thought I, like, especially afterwards, that's when it's painful. Like when you take <laughs> it off and you feel the blood kind of flow everywhere. Uh -huh. oh, man, it's so terrible. And I think um, also a lot of people, they just kind of tend to forget um, their secondary movements. Um, mm -hmm. And when you think about strength, there, you know, there are three components that go into strength, like hypertrophy, which is huge. Um, skill acquisition and um, neurological adaptation. So obviously, you know, you, you do a, a movement all the time, um, you're gonna get good at it. So you're bench pressing, you're gonna get good at it. But if you think about it, um, it's so important to be able to, you know, incorporate hypertrophy, hypertrophy or GPP exercises into your routine as well to work on, you know, um, just getting bigger triceps, whatever muscle group it is that'll aid in helping, um, you know, whatever lift you know, you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's important because obviously the bigger your muscle is, the stronger it's going to be, the more you'll be able to um, use it to help with your lifts. So even right. if you're a power lifter, I think, you know, GPP stuff is very important. Oh yeah, for sure. It's definitely going to help the bigger lifts. Um, I find that if I really take my time with accessories that and really focus on technique and stuff, I think it's just as important as technique for the bigger lifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Especially if you want to lift your whole life. Yeah, it's all yeah, about longevity. Sure. Exactly. So how did you get into lifting? Um, yeah, I, I started and honestly just wanted to lose some weight. Um, really? I think, I think like my, most girls, you know, the majority of girls, especially, um, you know, whew, that I'll work with, um, they, they come to me and they're like, all right, you know, I think it's, it's really awesome, like what you're doing. I really want to get into powerlifting. Um, you know, where do I begin? Mm -hmm. Or like, I, I'm just, you know, a little self-conscious and I just want to lose a couple of pounds. Um, give me a diet plan and nutrition plan, um, you know, and that's kind of that, you know? And I think mm -hmm. that, especially I'm sure, you know, too, just like with social media being so crazy and like prevalent nowadays, it's just like everyone, um, there's a lot of information out there, right. but there's also a lot of bad information out there. That's true. Unfortunately, and um, mm -hmm. whew, my arms are burning. But um, yeah, for me, I just I kind of just Googled, um, you know, ways to get into lifting. I started just primarily as a bodybuilder and nice. trained kind of um, when I first started lifting weights. I, I started training just just for aesthetics um, nice. to lose weight to. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> To lose weight and to just like feel better about myself. And mm -hmm. then um, I did a show, um, and I think after a lot of girls, they'll, they'll do a show. And obviously, you know, when you get into fitness, you're you're in the best shape you've ever been in in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's when you're the most critical of your body, right? right. You know, you mm -hmm. lose the 10 pounds that you said you were going to lose, and then you um, just are very. You start comparing yourself to other people. Like, how can I get better? You're just never really content. Right. Um, with your progress, right? Mm -hmm. So um, for me, the reason why I just enjoyed powerlifting because it kind of made me focus on my performance as an athlete as opposed to a number on a scale or the way I looked. Um, mm -hmm. I stopped, you know, caring about, you know, looking a certain way. I started focusing more on progressing as an athlete and I just right. kind of fell in love with the process.
Nice. Um, yeah, and I think, especially for you, how, I mean, when did you start? Um, I've been powerlifting since maybe last year. Okay. Yeah, so I've started training mainly for, mainly for aesthetics as well. Um, so I totally understand where you're coming yeah. from. But it got to the point where you're never going to be satisfied. And for some reason, I just fell into powerlifting. And cool. I love the progression of performance and having an athletic background. Um, it's kind of nice to just focus on that and feel, I guess, normal, I guess. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And not have to worry about my physique so much, not nitpick over, like, the little stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. And ironically enough, though, especially um, as a beginner, when you add a training stimulus um, into your routine, you know, you may not, your, your mental focus may have shifted, you know, to more performance-based goals. But at the same time, if you're training, if you're, you know, exercising your muscles, a lot of women tend to see that um, the, the physical aspect kind of comes along with it. And I think, exactly. um, you know, for me especially, I was a little hesitant getting into powerlifting because I kind of thought that if I started lifting heavy, I would become big and bulky and manly. And, um, you know, especially as, you know, females, we don't produce enough natural testosterone right. for that to be the case. So, um, exactly. yeah, lifting heavy is the way to go. It is. <laughs> so if you don't want to do BFR and make things way over complicated, you can just simplify it and do, <laughs> do normal <laughs> curls. So, um, yeah, yeah, if you want to go do ahead. I, I like to do um, cable curls. Um, I think a good, is that a good weight for you? Yeah. Okay, so, so I think a good rule of thumb is just, you know, about 70 reps per body part twice a week is kind of typically what I like to do. So I'll do probably about two bicep exercises if I'm training biceps, um, mm -hmm. two or three, um, and kind of hit that rep range. And then, you know, just, just whatever, whatever exercises you like to do. Um, like I said, I typically keep my um, exercises pretty consistent just because I like to keep track of that and um, progress. So what about you? Do you... What are your rep ranges typically when you're doing um, accessory work? Um, it depends on the accessory work. So if it's curls, I do like four by 10. Okay. Um, anything smaller like shoulder parts, mm -hmm. um, anywhere 12 to 15. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Because I can handle lighter weight. Yeah. You know, and yeah, hit yeah, it yeah. more effectively. Exactly. Yeah, and use better form too, which is um, pretty important. Exactly. So yeah, especially, um, yeah, I can't, oh man, when people like go into the gym and just like mindlessly like doing um, heavy weight where they their form completely falls apart, they have no business doing that, that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. I think it took injury for really? me to realize. Yeah, you yeah. Know? and unfortunately that is very common. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of people tend to kind of run into that. And I think, um, you know, obviously like, with any um, competitive sport, um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think we're more prone to it than any other sport. I mean, you look at like the, you know, the career span of uh, football players, like it's, right. you know, it's like, like pro, years. Yeah. oh, it's, it's a lot less. It's about four to five years until they're done, you know, oh, in the that, pro leagues. Right, right, right. You right. know, and it's just like people, I think associate like lifting heavy with just, you know, like, oh, it's dangerous. It's horrible for your joints. Um, whereas, you know, it can be, but at the same time, um, I think a big thing that kind of comes into play like with any sport is just like you know making sure that you take all the factors into consideration and everything um, as seriously as training um, exactly you know like your your rest your recovery your nutrition right. um, all this kind of going to going to play when it comes to longevity in the sport I think exactly so. nice feeling that pump girl mm -hmm. <laughs> It's weird. My arms get pumped super fast. Yeah. 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 No, that's awesome though. Like nowhere else. <laughs> yeah. So when you're in meat prep, as you're um, training, I guess it's, you know, obviously your blocks are kind of tailored to um, incorporate, you know, more specific training. The closer you get, do you ever like take out any accessory work? The bulk of my training will be the main three lifts. However, okay. um, I do do more of the, uh, I do do some accessories here and there because they are important at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> they, I feel like they complement your bigger lifts where they can. And um, it's always nice to 
have that kind of discipline, you know? Yeah. And it's fun brewing up sometimes. Like, exactly. I love, like, at the end of, like, a heavy, like, deadlift or squat day where I'm just, like, freaking taxed. I, like, love going in and be like, all right, I don't really have to worry about too much. All I have to do is get my reps in. Exactly. Get a good pump, and then it's, it's, it's and then fun. And it's fun. Yeah. 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 And that's, I think, the biggest, like, most important thing about training, too, is just, like, doing it in a way that you're able to adhere to it for the long term. And, um being smart about your training that's like one factor and also training in a way that you enjoy exactly yeah so that way you can be consistent oh yeah i like doing single arm variations of exercises a lot more just because i've found that i typically tend to favor one side or the other when i'm doing like you know overhead presses or even like biceps stuff like that um mm -hmm. and this kind of like helps me really focus on you know that one arm instead exactly. of exactly like using my body to kind of <laughs> get it up there and it'd be completely uneven so right. I like to use kettlebells um you can do it with a dumbbell as well but um yeah it's just kind of like a an Arnold press um you know you want the kettlebell to stay close to you as close as possible um just for stability reasons and also um yeah just you know it, it feels a lot better and then you're just going to kind of press and you'll find that as you're pressing your arm kind of just goes and it rotates in a very natural movement so um Whatever rep range you want to do. Okay. Sometimes I'll do like lighter weight and then just like knock out like 30 and just totally kill myself. But The pump feels good though. Yeah, it does feel good. Okay. And shoulder health is so important too for bench pressing. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. People tend to forget that. Um, so one more uh, shoulder exercise. Like I said, I like to do 70 to 80 reps per body part. So one more shoulder exercise I really enjoy is the lateral raise to get those big juicy side delts um, and I actually typically like to do them do you usually do them with uh, cables there there are many ways to do them um, yeah okay so I just like you know the presses I like to do one arm at a time and um, I think it's important to um, especially if you're trying to really work your front delt um, to have a little bit of a slight like lean mm -hmm. and make sure that you're lifting in the mid scap plane so that's like you know I think a lot of people they'll kind of swing to the side um, mm -hmm. or just, you know, just kind of, you, yeah, you know how swing, you yeah. see people and I, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. guilty of it. I've done it before too, but Same. it's just really important to, um, you know, make sure that you're in that mid-scap plane too. So you're not using too much of your rear delts. And also um, it just feels a little bit more comfortable for me. And I like to kind of um, do one arm at a time as well. Just so I can really focus on the the contraction and just really that, that one arm that's working. You can do this with a dumbbell. You can, I like kettlebells actually. If you really? can go to a gym that has um, smaller kettlebells, the only kettlebells they use here are the heavy stuff because yeah. everyone's super strong, <laughs> but um, usually about a 13 to 18 pound kettlebell feels really good for these for me. So this is just a 10 pound weight. Delts are actually probably one of my favorite exercises to train. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just, just want big giant delts kind of uh, makes you look more symmetrical, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, for Makes sure. the waist look smaller. <laughs> Bodybuilder stuff. Bodybuilder stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, we just finished hitting some biceps and shoulders. I, I trade deadlifts today. So typically I like to save these secondary exercises for after my main lifts. Um, you as well? Yeah, yeah, I usually do it afterwards. Yeah, so, so the rule, good rule of thumb, you know, pick a couple exercises, um, whatever you enjoy doing. Um, a good, good rule of thumb is 70 to 80 reps per body part per session, maybe two to three times a week. Um, keep it simple, have fun progressing. Mm -hmm. That was fun, sometimes I like to, yeah. it's always fun burning out. And um, yeah, biggest thing is just work hard and continue progressing in a way that you enjoy. Yeah, this is this is my first time at Super Training. It was an awesome experience. I'm super jealous of this girl because <laughs> she gets to train here all the time. But um, yeah, like I said, just pick, pick whatever it is that you enjoy. Continue progressing at it and um, try this workout and let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah, it was nice having you. Thank you. It was nice yeah. meeting you too. Nice meeting you too. <laughs> all right, that was cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. All right, it was cool. Thanks for watching the last video guys. If you want more content, be sure to subscribe, like, share it, leave your comments below on what you thought. If you want to see more content from the strongest gym in the West, be sure to click up here. 
And if you guys want the best gear in the powerlifting game, all the strength sports, slingshot, right over here.